This is a Halbuck array. At least, my version of one. Most of the time, the magnetic orientation diagrams of them look more like this. Black arrow usually indicates north. I'll be doing things with my Halbuck array that most people don't try though. What is a Halbuck array? A Halbach array is an arrangement of permanent magnets which increases the magnetic field on one side of the array while effectively canceling out the field to nearly zero on the other side of the array. The Halbach array was created by physicist Klaus Halbach in the 1980s as a way to focus accelerator particle beams. What's it used for? Halbach arrays are used for brushless AC motors and magnetic coupling. You'll find them in efficient voice coils. Wiggler magnets used in particle accelerators and free electron lasers. It's also the key component in the induct track maglev train system. The simplest application though would be that of a refrigerator magnet. The fact that your refrigerator magnets are made of Halbrook arrays is why they stick to your refrigerator when you place them with the printed side of the magnet showing. This is the side that has augmented magnetic field cycles and they fall right off if you turn them around to the magnetically cancelled side. If you use magnetic film, it's quite easy to see the Halbach array effect demonstrated. The magnetic field lines are barely visible on one side of the array, while highly pronounced on the other. Quite often I will revisit designs if I think of new things I want to try or if I see something new I could learn from them. I tried using permanent magnets with the Halbach array to achieve rotation and motive force in my first two videos dealing with the array, but I didn't try using a steel ball. In fact, I've never seen anyone try using a Halbach array to move a steel ball down a track. So I thought what a great opportunity to learn some new things and expand my knowledge. By the end of this video I had a really interesting revelation. So you might want to stick around until the very end because it's a pretty interesting idea. An idea that I've also never seen anyone try. For those of you unfamiliar with my methods, the reason I'm resetting the cart and moving it back and forth through the entrance and exit ways is to determine if there's any motive force being generated. Basically, if the magnets around the track are able to draw the cart into the magnetic field and expel them out the other end without drawing the cart back in, well that's what I'm looking for. You can take an assembly that does that instead of a series of them to cycle continuous motion. That's the first thing I'm testing. The second is to see if the repulsion at the entry point of the magnets around the track is light enough that the acceleration at the exit point of the cart is great enough to cycle. Again, for continuous motion. Third, I'm checking to see how many cogging points are present in each configuration to determine the best configuration to use for further testing. Instead of just showing you clips of assemblies that I've already configured into what works best, I thought I would show you a little bit of the testing process that goes into determining my final configurations. I'm not going to take the time to show every single test, but I tested every single configuration backwards and forwards, and then I would flip the card and test it in the opposite magnetic orientation backwards and forwards as well. That's the correct way to test every build. I even tried flipping the Halbuck array so that it's backwards on this version. The most dramatic results were when I faced it this way. Now when you expand the array, it cancels out the positive effects. So you're better off removing the last four magnets and just doing it with the six. Perhaps putting spaces between them, even uh, magnetic shielding between each section. You might be able to get some kind of uh, continuous movement going that way. Okay, the reason it's difficult to use the Halbach array to achieve motive force is because the poles in the array flip back and forth between north and south, making it difficult for a cart or rotor to align itself properly. It simply cogs up whenever it's in an area of opposing polarity magnetic flux. That doesn't have to be the case with a steel ball, though. 
A steel ball will follow a north just as easily as the south pole. However, the problem is that by extending the array pattern, the ball is only following the attraction it receives when entering the edge of the array. So it slowly winds down because it's just riding the wave pattern. And there's no variation of that wave. It's a simple, consistent wave of magnetic flux. To alter or vary the wave would only make it cog in areas where the flux is closest to the steel ball. The simplest way to explain the effect you get from this experiment is that it's similar to a car coasting up and down a series of hills. You can build enough momentum from a slight push to get over another hill or two, but gradually the car will slow and eventually come to a stop. That's of course due to gravity, drag, the weight of the car, etc. So the best way around this problem is simply to break up the array into separate units and apply shielding to one or both of the end cap magnets. It's possible that you could use the momentum from the initial burst of magnetic force as the steel ball is pulled into the array, and then effectively block the magnetic field at the exit point, allowing the ball to coast into the next series of magnets arranged similarly. So generally what I'm talking about is something similar to this. I can't say whether you could do a succession of these, but you can easily do two or three of these in a row. And that leads me into the next idea that I had. When I was doing research for this video, I ran across a description on Wikipedia which I found interesting. They use the analogy that the Halbrook array worked similar to horseshoe magnets aligned adjacent to each other, which made me think of one of Howard Johnson's magnetic motor designs. So I thought, what if I use the Halbrook array in a similar fashion? Setting up the north poles facing forward, with a track set up of successions of ceramic magnets with their north poles all facing up and I noticed it functioned very much like Howard Johnson's linear magnetic motor, which is an imbalanced system. There are three types of permanent magnetic motor systems. I'll cover what those are and how they work in a future video, so stay tuned. I'm not sure you can tell here, but basically no matter how long you make the track, you end up with successions of movement and cogging areas in between, meaning that if you took the time to tune the magnets on the track, it's possible you could end up with consecutive movement. So here's the idea that I had. The Halbrook Array and Howard Johnson's linear magnetic motor. While the magnetic orientations differ, the configurations are similar. So what if you combine them? Simply looking at the Halbrook Array using the arrows doesn't demonstrate the magnetic effect it causes in great clarity. What's actually happening? By forcing the north poles together, it amplifies the magnetic field pattern. It does this by crowding the electron spins of the center magnet while nearly canceling out the south pole magnetic spins. Howard Johnson uses a similar technique for crowding the electron spins of the magnets in many of his magnetic motor designs. So, it's obviously going to take some adjustment to compensate for the magnetic orientation variations, but this is going to be a fun project to work on. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Tune in next time when I will attempt to combine a Howard Johnson linear magnetic motor design with the Halbrook array. Do great things.